What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. As you saw, you clicked on, you see, first of all, that's Ken Knapsack. That's all that counts. Um, if you clicked on the video, you saw this is the Battlefront 2, the story explained and kind of what we were going through, our review of it, things that possibly it could mean. Now, first thing we want to get out of the way here, I know that I'm going to just we'll call it what it is. Some people think that it was a little disappointing, that it took too fast to be able to play this whole thing. I will say that I don't have... I don't have a lot of gripes with that complaint as far as it being too fast, but I like what it did for the mythology and how it filled in certain gaps in the story. There's some fast points indeed, but uh, try growing up playing Atari, Star Wars, and Empire Strikes Back, all right? Try living in those dark ages. This is a great game and a great story. It's a great story, and I think that there are some issues, and we we're going to go through this story kind of who this person is, what it means for the overall lore, and uh, let's just get into it. And as you will see, there will be a lot of footage, and th this is a spoiler-heavy review. So like we said, you're going to see footage from the game, you're going to see stuff from the game, spoilers and all that stuff, so be warned. If you haven't played the game and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled, you should shut this off because we're going to get into it. All right, so Ken... Tell us a little bit about our lead character here. It's Aiden Versios from the planet Vardos, which yep. is a new planet introduced uh, just with this character, but also in Christy Golden's novel, uh, Inferno Squad right. Battlefront 2, which is uh, a really good novel. and it's a good, good setup to find out who she is. Great prequel. Yep. Her father, Garrick Versio, is an admiral in the Imperial uh, Navy. Her mother, uh, who I, I, I do believe memory serves, she's passed on. She had an illness. Um, that she did a lot of the uh, art, the Imperial recruitment art, and if you're on, there's the Vardos level, she right. she probably, it's safe to assume, did the Palpatine art, some of the recruitment posters. She was raised to be an Imperial. Right, and so we start off knowing that if you have read Inferno Squad, you know how much she despises the Rebellion. Mm -hmm. You know how she is this elite, she is this elite soldier in Inferno Squad, and we start off to where she has been captured she, we find out later on that she wanted to be captured. She is captured by the rebels, and you have to kind of play to get her out of there to basically eliminate a message. And this is right before the Battle of Endor. Mm -hmm. So we, she has her droid, which I love this droid, by the way, that she... Right, ten, yeah. yeah, I love the droid that cool. she had that kind of sliced things open for, for her. She gets out. She basically, throughout this, kills an so many rebels on the way out. It's, it's incredible. But then she also, there's this great scene that she's going through and she sees this message from Akbar, yeah. but then gets sucked in and then we re are, are reintroduced if you read Inferno Squad to the Inferno Squad. Yeah, Gideon Hask, Del Mico. Love that, Hask, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Hask is great. Uh, yeah, that, that message from Akbar to the to this rebel cruise over here, like, hey, we're going to have a diversion. We're massing near Sullust and, and we're going to have a diversion, but Gideon Hask, I believe, is the one who's saying, like, the rebels think we don't know about Sullust. Of course, uh, Vader refers to it. The, what, what of the rebels massing near Sullust in Return of the Jedi? So right from the beginning, you know there's connections. There's right. deep, deep, deep cuts. And that's throughout this entire thing. Yeah. Right before we started doing this, we, and we'll talk about it a lot more, and Ken will reference it a lot more, the Shattered Empire comic yeah. book written by Greg Rucka that was one of the first stories to come out in the new canon in the time period after Return of the Jedi. Just how much of Shattered Empire connects to Battlefront 2 story? An amazing amount. Almost to the point where I, I, I had to refresh my memory on the Shattered Empire. It's a four-issue comic run. You can get the trade paperback. It's out there now. And a lot of the concepts, Operation Cinder, the Sentinel droid, which is those uh, red messenger droids for the Emperor. Uh, the I mean, down to the almost word perfect for what the messenger droid says in the comic right. is what is said here in the game. And uh, this Operation Cinder, which involves these satellites to kind of destroy weather systems on planets and kind of destroy the planets via that uh, That's kind in of Shattered Empire. That, that is yeah. that, that the the uh, satellites on on and above Naboo are in Shattered Empire. And there's dialogue in the game that connects and is the same dialogue as the comic. I think that that's a lot of the stuff though that I think some of the, maybe some of the fans who had the critiques, it's, and they shouldn't have to read all these things or know all these things, but this is what the overall canon junkies, I think, yeah. were craving for. Because whether it's Shattered Empire, the Aftermath trilogy by Chuck Wending, which uh, is very strong in that. There are a lot of characters that are introduced in those novels that tie into this book. There are characters from, I can't remember, what's the, what was that online playing in that we talked about with that one character? Yeah, it's a little tablet game. It's a little uh, tablet game. But uh, even, and and the, uh, the, the, the admiral from that is in there. He's, yes. the, he's mentioned in that yes. as well. Ray, Ray Sloan mentioned, yeah. is mentioned in this. Ga Gallius Rax is mentioned at least twice. Yeah. Right, who is also a character from the Aftermath book. So there is, I think that this 
game is really made for Canon junkies. It this, and this is the one thing, and I've been a, a, a big critic on the fact that Lucasfilm hasn't been doing this, mm. and they have, and they do in this when they tie everything together. We get ba basically. So I didn't reconnects with the with the squad here, goes on, out, and then we get to Endor, and we mm. basically take place as the fight is happening in the sky above we're on the moon of endor they're having this battle she's once again wiping out all these rebels she's got to get to the tie mm -hmm. to uh yeah well she discovers that the imperial bunker is destroyed so right. han's off running this way right and she uh, let her lets her father know and her father says oh the de the death star's weak then it's unprotected right and as they try to uh as they're talking about what they're going to do that's when the second death star explodes it blows up you hear it blow up in space, yeah. all right, that's never been a big uh, issue to Star Wars, that's fine. It blows up, then they gotta get off the planet, yeah. they get into the tide, they take off, and you just, it, once again, it's, just, it's, it's setting up the fact that this, she is this just imperial who is, is, is so thrown off by yeah. the fact that the rebellion, how did the rebellion do this? And then she wants revenge. Now yeah. this is where I do get a bit of, I, I have the same critique that a lot of people had here, and I said it to you. She eventually winds up, after she finds out that that weather thing is, um, is messing up her home planet, and that, they, that the Emperor had these beings that, they were, what, what's the, tell me that scene that happens between. The, the, the Sentinel droid, so after Endor, she goes to her father, her father says the Emperor's dead, and you know, here's what we're gonna do, and the Sentinel droid delivers a message just, actually just for her father. Right. Uh, it's just for specific people in the Empire. It's part of, there's two things, Operation Cinder, and, and there's the contingency plan, which is featured in Aftermath, right. the Aftermath novel. Little different, that is the Emperor's plan of, of the, the Empire, Empire should not survive the Emperor. Right. Tear it down, destroy it. That's something a little different, but then Operation Sender. So she learns that the, this is going on, but they don't have a target. And uh, that is when, uh, that's when she starts to uncover that the Emperor... And she starts getting the Imperial, pissed off. Yeah, yeah. She sent, they, they send her to her planet. Um, she's there with the with its task, and then who's the Leonard Nimoy looking guy? Del Mika, and yes. Del Mika. So they, they send them to, to the planet. They're down there, and then this is where... I understand why the switch happens, but also had a little bit of an issue. She wants to free some people. Ahaska says, yep. no, I have, to, I have to stay with my director, and he turns against her, and there's this standoff, and she eventually winds up just now mowing down stormtroopers, taking them, just destroying everything to get these people off the planet, and, and this was, to me, the one part where I went, that was a little easy. This is someone who hated the, the rebellion for so long, and then just starts firing on stormtroopers like she believed in it. And I guess maybe because you can, the argument is, well, this was her home planet that they're destroying now. And it's, it is a planet full of lives that are being destroyed. Like maybe this was the wrong thing. Did it bother you at all? How quick she was just like, ah, the, maybe I'm going to kill some stormtroopers. The speed of it, I, I get the complaint about that. You know, this, was, this is a multiplayer game that also has this single player campaign to kind of to help bolster the game. So I get that complaint. I think the story, like, I don't have 200 hours to play. You don't have 200 no. hours to play. Four hours was barely just fun. Four. For, yeah, barely had four. Um, yeah, literally, I'm like Thanksgiving morning trying to squeeze right. this in before I, I celebrate with the family. Um, but that, that's us. That's fine. So I get the complaint. Um, I, the Del Miko turn, he follows her. Um, that's not as problematic to me because you have that mission with Luke Skywalker that ends up being Luke Skywalker on the planet. Yeah, we're going to cover that for sure. And, and Del kind of, uh, he's already thinking about it before then. Because that happens first, That right? happens yeah, first. So let's, let's, yeah. go, let's jump back into that because before all that happens that we just talked about, one of the things that happens in this game is you get to play as one of the classic characters. And one of the classic characters to start is Luke Skywalker. And yeah. you have the saber and you're going through. This ties into so much with the Luke Skywalker lore. It's incredible. But like you said, with Dell, he, he now, you, you, you find out right away that this is that kind of character he is. He's not this Hass type character where he, he, he was one of these Imperials that you maybe met in a Claudia Gray book. Like something yeah. along the lines of someone who joined the Empire because they thought they were doing the right thing. Was, was a was a soldier on the wrong side, but ultimately was a pretty decent dude. Mm -hmm. Meets Luke. Now Luke, we find out, has been doing exactly what we thought he would be, and that's looking for artifacts. Yeah, almost immediately after the the end of the events of Return of the Jedi, uh, it, it's this theory I kind of had for a while, and I think you're on board as well, where it's like, all right, you're a Jedi, but you didn't learn the normal way. You didn't go to the Academy. You didn't right. take Yoda's Jedi 101. Yoda had to train you in a different fashion. As we know now, didn't even really want to train you. Uh, really, really want to train Leia. So I think Luke is a Jedi who now has to go learn what he is. And immediately he starts 
starts that journey. And we got this, this, this compass he gets on Pilio, which right. is also referenced in one of the stories in, in Legends of Luke Skywalker. I mean, you're going to see that in the last year. Yeah, that's, that I think factors into what even The Force Awakens has going on. And then it, in the Shattered Empire comic, he's already searching for the r remains and the, and the remnants of the tree uh, Force, on the yeah. Jedi Temple in Coruscant. So he's already on this thing. We know Lor Sentek at some point uh, will, from his character bio, will join that journey. So Luke is already going. That was pretty exciting for me to see. Luke's Luke's hitting the ground running. Yeah, and, that's, and you learned a lot about him, kind of over the overall lore of what he was doing. And also you get to see exactly how powerful he was yeah, yeah. throughout this entire thing. Um, but yeah, now we jump back into now, like you said, with that storyline, we learned that Dell would ultimately join Aiden. They do, they get off, and this is another where we see another classic character in Lando, voiced by Billy Dee Williams this time around. Yeah, yeah. And they now join the rebellion. Once again, a little little too f easy. I think that they have the choice to just leave and do their thing, but he's like, come on, join come, the rebellion. Come on. And they do. He's pretty smooth, so maybe he can, he's recruited. A maybe that's what they have. Maybe Lando became a recruiter for the rebellion. Maybe, maybe that's where Lando is, yeah. Uh, and then you get to meet this great character, this Duros character named Shreve. Uh, I like Shreve, Shreve a lot. Shreve is hilarious. Yeah. Great, great character, but but not over the top comedy. No, I thought it was perfect good. character See, I thought comedy. it was good character comedy. Yeah. Like I saw some some um, criticisms out there that it was just over the top comedy and not good in like no. a sitcom. I couldn't disagree with that more. I think no. that this was classic Star Wars comedy. Yeah, it was really good. It was really well played. Uh, Dan Donahoe is, uh, I believe, his name who, who voiced him. Great, just yeah. great character. And we see that. Then you know, there's there's a mission. I don't know. I might be jumping a little bit ahead, but I think the first thing we do is we do we get to Leia after that. What? Then we go to Naboo. Yeah, right. yeah. You you fly in, and this is where the Shattered Empire comic and uh, the it. game kind of cross over. In the Shattered Empire comic, Shara Bay, who is Poe Dameron's mother, yep. uh, Leia, and, and the queen of uh, Naboo at the time, and by that, this point it's kind of a, a ceremonial queen now, very not as powerful as when Padme right. was the queen. And they touch on that in the Leia book Yeah, too, they touch right? on the Leia book. Um, what ends up, they end up flying in Naboo and one Starfighters, and that's, uh, that's in the comic. That's what you see, and at some point they're outnumbered, and that's when a bunch of rebels show up, led by Lando, and there's an exchange with, with Leia saying, Lando, you came here at the right time, Lando is a wisecrack. That is in the game. So that's kind of a cool crossover. Then you go to, down to the ground, and you learn that Leia, from that point on, went and kind of led this kind of, uh, uh, the, the Imperials start to assault Theed, uh, the capital of Naboo, and, and Leia's on the ground there to fight that. And yeah. that's where the journey then picks up. And I think that, that's, that, again, like you said, all those little connections, I wonder that if you go and you catch, go back and read Shattered Empire, did you find out when you, read, when you reread Shattered Empire that you enjoyed the game story even more? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I want yeah. to go back and play it again, just right, to kind of take of more of it in, yeah. And so they do that. They're able to kind of do their mission. You start to see what I... what again, from learning all the stuff in the, in the canon, was that the Rebels didn't just win on Endor and then the, it's over. Right. They had to fight a bunch of battles. It be, they started winning a lot of the battles, yep. but they had to fight battles. They had to do all these other missions. So Aiden was part of that. Lando, of course, part of that. And then we get to, the, I believe this is the mission that we were both mm -hmm. really excited about, and this is the, the Han Solo mission. Yeah, so I want to say seven, eight months has passed. Because we, we do see Han... Early on, and he doesn't have a beard. He's just—he's the Han we know. He's on Endor. He's, when do we see him? Uh, or, well, you know what? In the game. See, Shattered Empire. Shattered Empire. There you go. Yeah. That's how they. It's Shattered right. Empire. You see it. Yeah. So uh, time passes, and then we got Han with a beard on Takadana because he's missing. Leia wants Iden Versio to find him. That is directly connected to Aftermath and the book Aftermath, yep. Aftermath Life yep. Debt, where Han has a beard. He's on this mission to liberate Kashyyyk, and this is him trying to find information to uh, from an Imperial contact to, to get to Kashyyyk. This is when you really want to give a high five and a hug to Pablo Hidalgo, Leland Chi, Kiri Hart, everyone who's in charge of the story because that's a lot of information yeah, to it, make sure that they don't retcon stuff throughout because you can so, so go, wait a minute. He's not. He's supposed to have a beard here. Well, he has yeah. his beard. And and and, and uh, Walt Williams and Matt Martin are the ones who wrote this story. Right. And Matt's part of the story group uh, as That's well. That's right, Matt. And, and we want to give them credit because Absolutely. that the, the little details. I mean, there's callbacks with certain. You know, look, some of the drinks that were being talked about in Maz's castle that are that fact. You know, are from other EU. Yeah, and it was all, all of them. It's yeah. the entire story team to be able to. Put that in, I would love to have been in the meetings to hear how they want to connect it all, put it yep. all together, and as they tell the story. Um, because Han now, it, like you said, is going through this, and you have to do this kind of search to find this one. That guy, how annoying was that guy? He was annoying, but he's funny. In a, in a, annoying in, in a good way. Like, there, he's supposed to, he's like, he reminded me of Joe Pesci in Lethal yeah. Weapon. 
Because he's an accountant, he's talking about numbers, and yes. this is never right. tell That's me the odds. That's what I'm saying. Solo. It, it, it's a great. It was they a ask great you the drive-through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, and then you, yeah, the that was some of my favorite stuff to play because even when Hans shooting this blaster, the sound, yeah. and everything you had to kind of go through, and then when Aiden comes rescues Han, and and it looks like he's gonna, they're gonna, he's gonna be excited. He finds out again that it's Leia, yeah. that and he knew he's kind of he's gonna be in trouble. But even then, he starts to seem to. Go back into his, you know, yeah. his ways. So yeah. everybody's story was kind of being is being told throughout this four hours of gameplay, if you will. And we then start to move. I think this is the Lando part. Yeah, yeah, Lando Shriv uh, with a nice, uh, nice adventure on Sullust. Who doesn't love going to hot, smoldery right. Sullust? Yeah, they do that. And there's, there's that. That's a fun adventure too. It plays into it a tad, but I think yeah. that the stuff that really plays into it the most is um, Jakku. Yeah, I love. All the stuff on Jakku. Yeah. So that is, as we know, the Battle of Jakku is the end of the Empire. Yeah. It is featured heavily in, in the book Empires and Aftermath Empires and by Chuck Wendig. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, obviously raised there. We have a lot going on in Jakku in the Poe Dameron comic. We know the First Order Agent Terex was a stormtrooper there at the time. Right. It's so, funny to realize, I mean, when initially yeah. when that first Star Destroyer we saw in the Force Awakens trailer when Ray zips past and yep. see like, well, how did that one land? There's so many Star Destroyers that fell out of the sky. Yep. There's so many different ones. And there's rumors that Luke pulled one down, but that doesn't seem like that Luke's was the case yeah. in the book. Uh, uh, I mean, in the, in the game. No, yeah, not, no. I, I, I don't believe Luke is on Jakku, but... But I, I've and ha, I've read Legend of Luke Skywalker now. It's fun, but uh, I, yeah, the one Ray passes by. One of them is definitely the Inflictor. One of them right. is the Ravager, the Super Star Destroyer, uh, and of course Lost Stars. Right. And in, in Lost Stars, you have the Inflictor, uh, which is uh, Sienna Ray's yep. ship. And in the game, as you're flying around, all this action, there's a me uh, a mention of of there's two operatives on an Imperial Star Destroyer. That's Thang Kyrell and, and his buddy up there. As so so even they that, they that, that's them. connected. When did um, they mention them in that? It's just in the background. What, and you see them? No, no. They just just someone them. someone says there's a Star Destroyer crashing or something like that. Oh wow. And there's all, also that's mention so cool. of uh, see, Wedge. Play it again. Yeah, Wedge and Snap, Tem and Snap Wexley. What um, do they say about them in that? See, uh, I've, they I've just, missed this stuff. They refer they they refer to them and in in. In aftermath, that's a big sequence with them flying, and, and so the battle of Jakku is crazy. There's a lot of great stuff happening. You're on the ground at some point. You're in the air. It's kind of crazy. All these rebel cruisers and, and right. Imperial Star Destroyers, they really did a good job with that. They absolutely did, because you see that battle, you see how it's kind of come to an end, but then now we get to really what this whole story for Aiden is about, and it's the the conflict with her father. Right. And she goes out, she finally, she's, she's able to land and get onto his ship, she does it. This is another issue that I had with it that she's had this whole thing. She wants to capture him. She wants to give him down. First of all, she turns on her dad pretty quick. Then second of all, then she forgives him pretty fast because then he's like, ah, you know what? I'm proud of you. Get out of here, kid. Yeah. Go do your thing and, and be with the rebellion. I, it's, it's too late for me. Like, yeah. All right. And she leaves. And it's yeah. like, that that was a little anticlimactic for me. I I, I understand the point. I, I'm not going to take that away from anyone who thinks that. I, I enjoyed it, but again, I I was rushed. I think because they felt they had to. I don't know. Again, it's only a four hour campaign. I get that critique of it, but when you look at the undertones, uh, her father had respect for her, and I, I, I get the fact that he's like, I'm not going to go to the unknown regions, right. which is what Gallius Rax wanted him to do. Right. He wanted, he was one of the selected because only a few imperial officers were selected for that. So. Re rewatching it again, I liked it a little second time. When you play it, you're like, "Let's go kill Dad." Oh, okay. Right, and you do. You go. So the the battle's over. There they are. Her and and Leonard Nimoy have a, uh, <laughs> ha a like have a nice kiss. Um, and great then, shot too. I love that sunset. It, it was great. Ships crashing. And then this is what everyone's talking about. Yeah, this is yeah. the main thing we're talking about. We fast forward to to the time of right right before the Force Awakens starts. Yep. Right before. The Jakku um, and Kylo Ren find Lor Senteca, all that stuff, and we now find that Leonard Nimoy is is older now, and he is he's confronted by by uh, not Hux, but well, he, he's um, been he's been captured on the Corvus, which is the excellent ship that the yeah. Front Squad is based off based in. Uh, Protectorate Gleb, who now has four eyes, and, right. and by the way, it's also mentioned in the Front Squad. It's, she she was a, a teacher and mentor for Aiden and Gideon growing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, uh, she's captured Dell and hands him over to. Now Gideon Hask and Kylo Ren. Right, and so Hask and Kylo Ren come through. Now Kylo Ren, this is a really cool part. He gets inside of his head, and there's there's more to be said. He finds out that he and Aiden are, had this relationship, had a daughter. Mm -hmm. Now everyone right away now is saying that this is Rey. Right. 
I don't think this is Ray at all. I don't think that this is the way they were going to reveal anything. I think it, this is, I think that they did this on purpose. I mm -hmm. think that they did something and made it so kind of, oh yeah, by the way, they have a daughter and everyone can, and they're probably laughing. And everyone's going to think it's Ray. It's not Ray. All that they're going to do here is they're going to set this storyline up because they're doing another part of the story. They're yeah. going to continue the story. I believe it comes out in another six months or seven months. I forget. There's another yeah. part to this whole story that you'll be able to play. And um, I think that it just sets up a a pissed off Aiden now having to deal with during the time of between episode 7 and episode 8 that's why it's going to come out because they're waiting because there's going to be more story to tell in a couple yeah. in a couple of weeks here and yeah. that's how it's going to play in it's not going to be right yeah, absolutely. I, I look, I'll give it a 1% chance, a 1% yeah. chance. Someone tweeted me saying, well, hey, they revealed Poe's parents in the Shattered Empire comic. That's read by less than who play the game. But there was no mystery to Poe's parents. There was no question about it. There's a giant question to Ray's parents. Like, again, could it? Yeah, it's interesting. Sure, I'll give a 1%, 2% margin, but I just don't think there's a reason for it to be Aiden and Dell. I'll tell you, though, mm -hmm. that even though I, I agree with you 100%, and I think mm -hmm. it's a 1% chance is high, there would be something pretty special because of the, all the connections on Jakku, right? Yeah. There would be something pretty special. At that time, you wouldn't have to age up uh, Janina. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to age her up at all. No. You could put her in The Last Jedi. It could be one of the best kept secrets ever. If you showed a flashback, yeah. she's there. She drops off um, Ray. She takes off, and she's on a mission now to find Ky Kylo. To find but, well, yeah, that doesn't actually, that wouldn't make sense time-wise. Well, no, that would make sense, Thomas, because yeah, of where it is. But so maybe there's yeah. another, why would she leave her there though? She that's that's that's, that's the, the big question about why would she who's leave her there? That, that Whether it's Luke, Han, yeah, Leia, so no. or Bob and Jane yeah, Ray, no way. why why is she left on that planet? So yeah, yeah Ray's what about 20, 1920 at the time she's of the Force Awakens. She's nineteen. Kylo's twenty nine. Yeah, so he was born on uh, the day uh, the uh, the day the Galactic Concordance was signed. Ray born a little later. So you know it could be something there. But yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, one percent chance. Okay. I just don't think it's interesting. It's fun, but there's a lot. The, I think the highlight of that stuff, that mission with Kylo, is the reveal that that compass is tied to the map, uh, to the first Jedi temple, and it's all tied to Lor Santeca and Luke. Listen, this is what I'm talking about here. I think that before you just write this thing off as saying like, oh, just it was too easy, it was too fast. Look at the tie-ins. If you knew and you're familiar with all the tie-ins, because even hearing some of the stuff he's talking about, there was some that went over my head. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. If you look into it, how it all interconnects, I think you may enjoy it just a little bit more. But I love what they did for the first real canon story in the video game. Happy that it happened. So I'm overall, I'm very excited about this game, and, and, I'm, and I want to play it again. I want to play it again. If they said, hey, we're going to do a novelization of just this story to get inside the characters' heads a little bit more, I'd be on board for that. And, did, you know, and again, to the reveal, the question of the reveal of Ray, Ray's parents, is it too big for a video game? Well, by that to same token, I guess you could argue, is this reveal about Luke's journey too big for the video game? And I, I think not, because in the movie... Last Jedi, or even in Nine, you could explain it quicker, easier. Oh, I had this compass, uh, you know, for the planet Pileo. Yeah, That's right. all you need to and say. I think they'll definitely do that. All right, so we're going to wake up our cameraman, but before we do that, we want you guys to comment and share. Do it all. Subscribe here to Collider. Leave your thoughts, exactly what you think. You saw all the video game footage here. You saw the shots from Shattered Empire. Have you read Shattered Empire? Did you read Aftermath? And what did you think of the game and the story? What did you think about the story? Go ahead and comment. That's Ken Knapsack.